Hello everyone, today we will be painting these pink Lysianthus. And here is a beautiful reference by Dakota Studio. And now let's go through our main steps. First, we are going to paint the overall shapes of all the flowers with the lightest color. Second, we will paint everything except of the lightest areas, so the second layer will integrate shadows and mid-tones. Third, we will increase the value in those areas which are darker. So we will paint the shadows and leave lights and mid-tones uncovered. And these steps we are going to do on wet, so we would get all those soft edges uh, of the shadows. So let's start. So first I'm mixing opera with just a little bit of violet red. I'm using my flat brush. The paint consistency is like thick tea. And I'm starting with the bottom flower. With my flat brush I'm trying to follow its overall shape. It's outline mostly, but I'm working with my brush strokes, as you can see. And I'm following as long as I can, as my flat brush allows me. Because the brush has certain kind of shape, you won't be able to follow the floral shapes like, exactly like it is there. This is why it is so important to choose the right shape for every step you are going through. I decided to use the flat brush for uh, painting the overall shapes of those flowers because I see all those kind of sharp corners and uh, geometrical, kind of geometrical shapes in those petals. And flat brush uh, allows me to create these shapes really well. Uh, the color is changing a little bit on my painting, as you can see. I don't do it on purpose, but I kind of like that the flowers I'm painting are a little bit darker from some of the sides. And this adds a um, kind of small variety of values, even on the first layer. And as long as the value isn't changing very much and the color isn't changing very much, it's uh, fine and it's even good. Now let's wait until this first layer will get dried. And until then let's do stems and leaves. I'm using round brush for leaves and stems and I have mixed two greens, light green and dark green, starting with my stems, painting them from the top to the bottom. I let this green to flow a little bit into the pink because you see all those soft transition between green and pink in the part of the flower's sepal. And I'm going to do the leaf and maybe a couple of them. And to paint the leaves of this shape is uh, really easy with the round brush. So we're starting with the point of the brush, then press on it a little bit to paint the wider part of the leaf. And I'm going to do the second one, which will be a little bit smaller. And here I am uh, starting with the point of my brush, then press and lift it up again to make the leaf thinner uh, in the bottom. Now let's uh, do the shadows on the leaves and stems. I'm going to do it wet on wet for the paint will flow a little bit and I would get those soft edges of the shadows. I have mixed two greens again, but this time dark green prevailing. Also, if you want to make this green a little bit darker, you can add some indica and wet on wet, adding a few strokes, mostly um, on the um, sepals, some on the stems and from one side of the bottom leaf. Usually I add the shadows in the greenery where the leaves intersect with the stems or stems intersect one with another and under the, uh, right under the petals part, under the flowers themselves to show the cast shadow on the stems from the flowers. Now I'm going to do the sepal of the top flower. It's really tiny and um, small, tiny small green brush stroke. Um, so, until now the first layer has dried, if yours is not, wait a little bit more. And now I'm going to do the uh, shadows. But first let's paint those tiny little green center on the bottom uh, flower. We don't see it very well on the reference, but let's just do it there to add the accent, to add a certain detail which is uh, which will help us to show what kind of flower it is. So all those uh, things like centers and textures help us to determine for the viewer what kind of flowers we are showing. 
and uh, here I decided to add a little bit more of darker brush strokes into my leaves and stems to increase the contrast. So I have mixed two greens again, but uh, adding more, much more of dark green here. And you see the paint consistency is pretty thick here. I would say it's like um, thick coffee. And after that, let's do the second layer with shadows and mid-tones. So this layer integrates everything except of the lightest areas of the flower. And to see where these areas are, you just need to look at the reference and just to find those lightest areas, sometimes to decide which areas are going to be lightest and which will be painting as mid-tones, example, if it is not very obvious. But on this reference, it's pretty obvious. And I have changed uh, the reference on this video for a while for you could see what I mean by this by painting everything except of the light by painting this second layer. So for the color I have mixed opera with violet red but this time the color is a little bit darker so that means I took more paint less water and a little bit more of violet red um, than for the first layer. And with this second layer I'm also trying to follow the shapes I see on the reference all those shapes which we see between the lightest areas. So leaving the lightest uncovered and painting everything except of them. And this second layer I'm also painting with flat brush because I see kind of geometrical shapes of all those shadows and mid-tones. So I decided that flat brush will work really well for this layer as well. Um, my green center has not dried yet until this moment, but it would be much better if you would wait until it will dry for it wouldn't flow into those pink. Because later I will have to adjust it a little bit with my round brush to make it more visible. So please wait a little bit longer until this green center will be completely dried. And then I usually start to paint those folds and those shadows from the center of the flower if it is rose or Lysianthus or some other flowers with complex forms. I'm trying to follow um, those shapes of those shadows and mitos as long as I can. It's okay if you will make them a little bit simpler than they are on the reference, but just a little bit, not too much, because sometimes uh, you can just paint a few strokes, like two, three brush strokes, and it seems like it's okay, you already painted the shadows, but uh, the flower will look a little bit too simple, too rustic this way. Just make sure you have enough of those folds, but you don't need to paint all of them. And now um, when I painted the second layer with my round brush, I take the round brush for this third step because uh, the shapes I need to cover on it are quite small. So I need this thin point of my brush. And I have mixed in some crimson first and added a few strokes of uh, shadows from the right part into these previous layers, wet on wet. So this layer is still wet. The first layer is dried, but this wet layer with um, the shadows and mid-tones is still wet. So we are doing uh, this third step on wet, adding a little bit darker pink. So I'm mixing in some crimson, some more of opera and adding just a few strokes from one side to show uh, the darker areas to show, to increase the shadows there. And on the bottom flower, I do the same thing, but right by the center to increase the shadow there, same way on wet. And also um, from in those areas where on the reference, I see there are darker shadows. And as you saw on these two top flowers, I have added a little bit different color into those shadows. So I added some green and a little bit of indigo and uh, made a few strokes of this kind of, I don't know what color it is, like gray, purple, whatever. But um, sometimes you need to add some um, additional colors to your shadows or to your mid-tones just to add the color variety for uh, the image wouldn't look too simple. And sometimes you can see those kind of uh, reflections, the reflections from surrounding. I mean, like if the flower is uh, placed inside the greenery, you can see some greens inside those pink shadows. And uh, sometimes you see them and you can show them, but sometimes you just need to mix in some other color and make a few tiny little strokes of some additional color into those shadows 
to keep the variety of colors in your painting. And uh, you have seen how I lifted up the paint uh, from my green center a little bit because it merged completely with all those pink shadow and added a little bit more of paint inside of it to make this green a little bit visible, more visible. And now with the point of my brush and same green, I mix dark green with light green and sub green and uh, painting those uh, tiny leaves on the sepals of the flowers. So try to do them on dry, not like I just did <laughs> for the top flowers. They're not dried yet, but I have painted those tiny leaves and they merge a little bit. That's okay, but just uh, if you will wait a little bit longer and make them on dry, they will look better. And now let's increase even more the shadows in some areas. So add those accent, really dark shadows. I took more of Opera, mixed a little bit with, I think it's crimson I had on my palette, and just with a few tiny, delicate brush strokes, adding those shadows, mostly in the center of the bottom flower and some uh, between its folds and petals too. So, uh, this was the last step. Thank you for painting with me these beautiful Lysianthus flowers. I hope you enjoyed the process and I hope to see you again in my lessons. Have a beautiful day.